That is, pre-emulsifying the sauce in a blender. We'll get back to that later. What? Really? Really? A blender to make the carbonara sauce? I've never seen this before. I'm very interested. Covering and keeping warm while we finish. What are you doing with the pasta? Ah! You are killing that pasta. The pasta is suffering right now. Are you okay? I'm dying. Help me. Basic. And some pickled jalapenos, because why not? Full jalapenos, why not? <sighs> On top, scoop it out, and behold, in spite of only having half the cheese sauce necessary and swimming in... Oh my god, it looks like a great carbonara. What a fantastic carbonara. Today we are reacting to carbonara anything. Foolproof carbonara by Babish. If you remember my first reaction video ever, I react to Babish where he made a carbonara. He did an okay job, he did a good job. But this time, he's trying to do something very challenging. Almost one million people watched this video. So let's watch it. Okay, so carbonara from an ingredients perspective alone is just an emulsion of water and different kinds of fat. In this case, Parmesan, egg yolks, and pork fat. Parmesan is French. Parmesan! It's Parmigian Reggiano. By the way, Pecorino Romano is the cheese you use. You can mix it with Parmigiano to make it more delicate. Parmigiano. Originally from Guanciale, a cured pork gel. And in my search to make the ultimate carbonara, I eventually tried out a technique we learned in the Cacio e Pepe episode of Botched. That is, pre-emulsifying the sauce in a blender. We'll get back to that later. What? Really? Really? A blender to make the carbonara sauce? I've never seen this before. I'm very interested. Any kind of carbonara, my cookware one-two punch is 12 inches each, stainless steel and cast iron. It's I prefer to use a stainless steel. That's my personal choice. Let's see how it turns out on the cast iron. I got about two, three inches of water in my 12 inch skillet that I'm gonna heavily salt and- All oh, right, so he's boiling the pasta in there in a small. That's a pain. You need a, a large pot to boil pasta. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm gonna start the guanciale off in a cold- That's not guanciale. That looks like ham. Don't call this guanciale, please. That looks how pale it is. That's so pale. So, it looks like it's sick, this guanciale. The guanciale should be nice, dark, full of flavors. This hasn't even been uh, aged for like a, a week. It's, it's not aged. It's not cured. Old pan and slowly cook it so that its fat renders out evenly. Now, ideally, you want to start cooking your pasta as the bacon finishes cooking. I did. Uh, he said guanciale and I call the bacon. I don't get it. I don't get it. What is it? Guanciale or is it bacon? Bacon is the belly and it's smoked most of the time. Guanciale, it's cured and it's this part of the pig and it's got flavors in there which normally bacon doesn't have, like uh, pepper, uh, salt, uh, can be garlic, can be juniper, can be different flavors. I did not do this, so I am preemptively stealing one and a half cups of precious pasta cooking water, straining That's good. In the pasta, tossing with a little bit of oil to make sure it doesn't stick, covering and keeping warm while we finish. What are you doing with the pasta? Abby, ah! you don't do that. You've been cooking for such a long time. You never let the pasta sit like that. You kill the pasta. The pasta is slowly dying. You are killing that pasta. The pasta is suffering right now. Are you okay? I'm dying. Help me. The sauce must be ready before the pasta is ready. So when the pasta is ready, it goes straight in the sauce. This is basic. Basic. Now over in the blender, we've got our three egg yolks. You should have done this before. Okay, I'm very interested to see what's happening here. And four ounces of finely grated Parmesan cheese. While that cup of pasta cooking water is still hot, we're gonna slowly stream it into the blender while it runs. Turn off the blender, finish cooking the guanciale, and then once it's... Is that not gonna be runny now? I don't get it because you don't want the sauce to be too liquid. Now, it should be liquid but creamy at the same time. So, be worried about this. It's done. We're gonna stream about a quarter cup of its fat into the running blender. Now, here you're gonna see a fascinating moment where I accidentally drop a chunk of guanciale <laughs> into the blender. Then I'm like, oh, I gotta start over. Then I'm like, wait a minute. What if, hold on, what if I just liquefy the bacon? I gotta turn on the blender. Please don't liquefy the bacon. We need the crunch, okay, from the guanciale. Under, hang on a second. I know liquid bacon might not sound super appetizing, but if you've got a powerful enough blender, it emulsifies it seamlessly into the sauce, making it ever thicker and creamier. Back in the pan, we're leaving a quarter cup of fat remaining as we add our cook. 
The pasta is dead by now, my friend. The pasta is dead. Cooked pasta, along with our remaining reserved cup of pasta cook. And it's also too much pasta for the little pan. Too much pasta, my friend. You can have a maximum 200 grams. It's already too much. 200 grams in the little pot. Now, this recipe calls for a half pound of pasta. I think I over. See, you took it off because it's too much. It was way too much. I did it a little bit, so I'm taking some out, but the rest I'm cooking together for about one minute over low heat. What you took off, what you took in other, it's gonna die there. Like, that's a cemetery, that little saucepan. Let's see, look out. Let's see how runny this egg is. I think it's too much. I don't believe this is creamy at all. Let's have a look. Then killing the heat entirely and keeping the pasta moving while I slowly stream in our blender. Guys, it's way too runny. Look at it, it's liquid. It's like milk. Should not be that way. It should be creamy. The reason why you emulsify it with the parmigiano and pecorino is because you want to make the cream. You want to make a thick egg cream. Or it can be runny, but it needs to be creamy. This is not creamy, my friends. You're not gonna get the results that you need to get. Bacon emulsion thing, which starts to Where is the emulsion? Thicken as it hits the residual heat of the pan and then further. I think you also have the stone on a bit too high because it's cooking very fast. It thickens as it cools, much like normal carbonara, but super creamy and 100% foolproof and adjustable. So not only does this technique yield far and away the best carbonara I've ever had in my life. Hey Babish, come on, you can do better than that. I love you, my friend. You do such a good job every time you cook. Everything is fantastic, but the carbonara, don't do this to me, please. Don't do this to the carbonara, okay? Carbonara would deserve respect, okay? Would you buy huh, a Porsche, and then you go inside the Porsche, and you find a Mercedes uh, interior? Huh? Or would you buy a Range Rover, and then inside you find the Toyota interiors? It doesn't make sense. If I buy a Toyota, and I find a Range Rover inside, oh, wow, then I'm happy. But if you don't find that, Anyway, if, the, if you buying carbonara, I want carbonara. That, that's my point, okay? You, know, you, you can't do this technique and just call it carbonara because you're killing all the restaurants, all the chefs that are working very hard right now in Rome and around the world to make the real carbonara, the real creamy carbonara, which is a dish that keeps evolving. So I like you trying uh, the technique, the blender. Beautiful idea, great idea. Maybe you needed more cheese. Maybe you needed less eggs. Or maybe you blend the egg, one egg first, add the cheese, and see how it react. Okay? Maybe the, the portions went was not correct. So let's work on that. What have you done next? One that's easier to prepare and harder to screw up, but it also affords us the opportunity to treat carbonara as a sort of base sauce from which endless possibilities and combinations become possible. In fact, I said It's not creamy. Oh, Admit that with the right combinations of fats and waters, you could carbonara damn near anything. Let's start easy and make a vegan version of our carbonara. Okay, guys, I've just launched a series on my YouTube channel. Right now, you can watch it where I make carbonara different ways. So I'm not here to tell you, oh, carbonara is on this way, that's it. No, you can play with carbonara. You can make a vegetarian carbonara. You can make a, a, a salmon carbonara. I make carbonara into a pizza. I turn carbonara into arancini, into risotto, following the same techniques. I'm, f I'm respecting the carbonara rules, the carbonara ingredients, but I turn the carbonara into different forms, not just spaghetti carbonara, okay? So if you wanna be creative and use mushrooms, yes, but make sure you keep the carbonara uh, flavors, technique, uh, methods, and ingredients the same, okay? Of course, if you don't want to use, in this case, you're vegan, you can't make carbonara. How can you make a vegan carbonara? Carbonara is all about eggs. It's all about the pecorino cheese. I'm so sorry, but you cannot make a vegan carbonara. There's no way. Carbonara, standing in for our bacon, as is so often the case, is mushrooms. In this case, hen of the woods or my- I understand you use mushrooms, my friend, but how are you going to replace the pecorino and the eggs? You tell me. Show me. Taki mushrooms trimmed of their bases, cut into bite-sized pieces, and then sautéed. But since they contain no fat, we need to bring our own from home. And that's great. You got oil, beautiful. So I've got about a half cup of light olive oil here. That's high smoke point olive oil. I'm adding the mushrooms and sautéing until deeply brown, like amazing. I love mushrooms. 15 minutes. Once things are just starting to turn brown, now is a good time to add your pasta to your pre-boiling pot of water. This he loves doing that. He loves it. Oh, he's using the Checo pasta. That's a good pasta. Bravo. This time I'm going to make sure that I'm using exactly half a pound so we don't... <laughs> Bravo. He learned the lesson. Have any more embarrassing pasta pull-out situations? Next time, maybe taste the recipe before you make a video. 
I'm just saying. And then by the time the pasta is done, you should have some nice, deeply brown mushrooms. Meanwhile, over in the blender, we are combining one tablespoon of red miso paste, about a quarter, uh, come on, make it a half cup of nutritional yeast. Wait, wait, you're using miso paste? Have you watched Marion Kitchen video? That's where I reacted to her miso carbonara. And let me tell you, yes, umami, umami, but it's not right. Uh, and what is powder yeast? What is that? So much yeast. What do you need that much yeast for? And about a quarter cup of the vegan egg replacement of your choosing. Then once the mushroom... What is that? What's the egg replacement for vegan? I need to understand this. What is it? And if that's the egg replacement, why do you have to use miso and that yeast? You can use vegan um, pecorino, vegan parmigiano. I'm sure you can find a vegan grated cheese. So why don't you do that? Vegan grated cheese, vegan egg, together you make the carbonara sauce. Yeast. Mushrooms are done cooking. It's the same procedure as before, slowly streaming in about a quarter cup of the cooking fat into the running blender and then setting aside. Back on the stove top, I'm finishing the mushrooms with about a half teaspoon of smoked paprika. Smoked paprika, okay. That's personal choice. You can put uh, spice in the carbonara if you like your carbonara spicy. Testing that around for about 30 seconds over medium-low heat before adding... See, you did the right thing now. Straight from the boiling water to the pan. You did the right thing, so you knew what to do before. Why did you do it? The pasta. Ideally, straight out of the water, just like this, so you have all the pasta cooking water you could ask for. Again, about a half cup of which we're adding back to the pasta, cooking together Bravissimo. for about one minute, over very low heat, and then back over at the blender, we're streaming about one cup of our pasta cooking water into the blender. What's a lot? blender as it runs, then killing the heat entirely under the pan as we... See? See? Look at that. Again, we've got a cream there, which is not creamy, which is not creamy. It's, it's like milk. Very, very runny. Keep the pasta moving and pour in our vegan carbonara emulsion sauce. Season to taste with kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper. Try to lift and toss the pasta rather than just mix it, aerating the sauce and maximizing creaminess. And there you have... I have to say, it looks creamier than the other carbonara. It looks good. Uh, so, well done, I have to say. I mean, you turn uh, carbonara into a vegan carbonara. <laughs> a round of applause, a round of applause, a round of applause. It looks fantastic. So, bravo, 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 bravo. It sounds weird, but if you're vegan, what do you do? I mean, why do you need yeast in a vegan carbonara? We have it, a fully vegan carbonara that is every bite as good as a real carbonara. I don't believe that place, but it looks good. No bullshit. It obviously doesn't taste exactly the same, but it Thank you. has the same amazing creaminess and texture with a rich, savory flavor all its own. And both this and the meat-based carbonara sauces are remarkably stable. They don't break, they're not oily, and even after sitting out for 30 minutes, a little bit of warm water brings what would normally be a concrete block right Bravo. Right back to life. So now, the real question, what else can we carbonara? What about a straight-up mac and cheese to really- Wait. Are you making a carbonara mac and cheese? That's a good challenge, but are you really doing that? Put this to the test, I'm grating four ounces of the oldest, oiliest cheddars I can get my hands on for- What? Using cheddar? Come on, man. You're making mac and cheese carbonara. Please don't use an orange cheddar. How can the milk be orange? Why is the cheese orange? Cheese should be white, light yellow. Plus, you use pecorino parmigiano. You don't use cheddar. You do not use cheddar for carbonara four to six years old. From there on out, the technique is pretty similar. I'm using thick cut bacon. Man, I have to get away the blender from you. Honestly, I need to take the blender away from you. Take the blender away from Babish. And instead of guanciale, macaroni. Uh, it looks like guanciale this time. Or maybe cut it different. Hmm. Runny instead of long pop. Wait, 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 wait. What did you do with the pasta? Pasta and am supplanting the sauce with fresh garlic, a teaspoon of Dijon. Wait, fresh garlic, Dijon. He's got Dijon, fresh garlic. He's got uh, cheddar cheese, orange cheddar cheese. There's no pecorino, no parmigiano. So what are you doing here? Mustard and a few dashes of hot sauce. You might also notice. The only thing that you have from carbonara is uh, a pasta water. Then I'm attempting a double batch with a pound of pasta. And it was only- No, pizza, I, can't, I can't see, I can't watch this. I can't, guys, come and watch my carbonara series right now on YouTube. I made arancini carbonara, vegetarian carbonara, pizza carbonara, risotto carbonara, and I'm also gonna make a salmon carbonara. And I respect the carbonara methods, rules, ingredients. This is not, what do you call this carbonara? What for? This is just a, a, a mac and cheese, 
uh, drunken experience. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Only at this point that I realized that I'd only made a normal batch size of sauce, so I only had half the sauce that I needed. Never Aw, what are you gonna do now? Nevertheless, the sauce still looked really creamy, even if there wasn't enough of it. To save the batch, I decided to let things cool off a little. Can you imagine you go to a restaurant, you pay $30 for a carbonara and they bring orange cheddar for you? Can you imagine going to Rome, I order carbonara and they bring orange cheddar? and add another six ounces of grated cheese and some pickled jalapenos because why not Full jalapenos why not <sighs> what's creative about this carbonara why do you call it even carbonara what's there's not there's nothing that reminds me of carbonara in this dish huh what's this huh holding together so that the unmelted cheese was evenly distributed returning it to the pan and pivoting as we so often do in life to the best possible outcome Wait, this is not finished? What's next? Of a bad situation. Mixing together two cups of panko breadcrumbs with about a half stick of melted butter and about two ounces each grated parmesan. Oh, he's got parmesan, parmigiano, he's got parmigiano, so why didn't you use it before? Cheddar and white cheddar cheese. Because he just loves cheddar, man. How can he be so skinny? Huh? What does the cheddar does to you to make you so skinny, babish? Because, as Thomas Jefferson used to say, cheese, 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 I love the cheese, I'm a cheesy boy. Top. <laughs> I like Jefferson. Up up our cast iron pan of mac and cheese with our cheesy breadcrumb mixture. Press it down flat, maybe show off its flatness to your nearest Kendall. And pop this guy is very precise. I like him. Pop it into a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 20 25 minutes until deeply golden brown and crisp. Done. It does look good. It does look like, it looks like a nice mac and cheese. There's no carbonara there, but it looks like a nice mac and cheese. And look at his gloves. Look at the babish gloves. He must be a superhero. It's like a superhero gloves. Looks like the Batman gloves. Because I'm Batman. On top, scoop it out, and behold, in spite of only having half the cheese sauce necessary and swimming in. Oh my god, it looks like a great carbonara. What a fantastic carbonara. Babish, don't do that to me, please. I love your culinary universe. But do not play with my carbonara, please. Do not play with a carbonara, okay? Next time you try and play with carbonara, do a test before you film the video, please. An ultra old cheddar being heated and baked and padded with other cheese, our sauce has not broken. I know it's kind of rich to even compare this to carbonara, but I hope this method helps you to think differently about cheese sauces. Just like- uh, huh? There are so many cheese sauces. You could call this a, a, a four cheeses mac and cheese. You could call this a super cheesy and crusty mac and cheese. You can call it mac and cheese my way. Why do you have to add this in a carbonara series? Where you do carbonara anything? Huh? You're foolproof. You're, pro you're fooling me. You're fooling me with this. We don't want anything healthy today. Today we just want carbonara. All I want is carbonara right now. <coughs> with guanciale, pig cheek, parmigiano reggiano, and pecorino. I like pecorino only, but I understand you want to be delicate, be delicate. Eggs, lots of black pepper and a beautiful pasta straight from the pot into the sauce. Do not kill your pasta in the colander. Don't. Guys, what have you learned from this video? Tell me. I want to know in a comment below, what have you learned from Babish? A great guy. I love his channel. He's been doing this for such a long time. And let me tell you, guys, I've tried so many recipes from Babish and it's really good. But today, he fooled me with this Carbonara Anything series video. So, what do you think of it? Let me know now. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate reaction video. E ora si mangia. I'm going to make a carbonara right now. Vincenzo's Plate. Ciao.